Welcome back guys, um, so this is my seventh video, um, my part for how to get your license in the state of California. Um, this In this video we're going to talk about stop notices, bonds, and finalizations of a contract. Now, this is important because for you to complete a contract, there's certain steps you need to um, do and go through or else it could be used against you if uh, you get a difficult client or maybe another contractor while you're working on your project his part doesn't go through but yours did and it could pretty much just make your you can cause your headaches and lose time and money so we're going to talk about first stop notices and subs so a mechanic's lien mechanic liens are for private work and only for prime contractors if you're a sub you can also be a prime contractor for example if you're a painter and you go directly towards a client you are a prime uh, contractor and let's say there's some drywall issues and you don't want to fix it yourself you would get a sub they would be your sub but you would be the prime so a mechanics lien is something that you would use for that now, if you go look in my old videos on mechanics lien, I'll explain to you what it is, but pretty much to sum it up, it's a it's a notice telling the owner that they're responsible for paying you. And if they don't pay you, you could put their property, you could put a lien on their property, which if they don't pay, could cause them to sell their home to pay you, pretty much. A stop notice is a lien on funds and can be used on private work. This is for subcontractors. And, and public work can only, when you do a public project, you can only use stop notices if you're a sub. And I mean, you, technically you could be a prime as well, but my point is though, if you're going to do a project with the public, with the public uh, entity, obviously there's no, you can't force them to sell anything. So you can't use a mechanics lien. You have to use a stop notice. A stop notice is pretty much a notice letting the, the letting the the company that's doing the public work, and again for the private work as well, letting them know that you haven't been paid by the prime contractor. Okay, this does not have to be the general contractor, just the prime contractor. That you haven't been paid for that, and that they should stop paying them until you get paid. That's pretty much it. That's that's all it is. So. It is a written notice, pretty much uh, you have to have it signed, so you're going to get it sent to a to the person that owns the building or the company, the lender or the bank that's doing that type of work for the company that hired you, okay? So pretty much, let's say there's a, a middleman, right? The middleman would be the prime contractor or the general contractor you could say to make it simple and you're a sub now the general didn't pay you so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go past the middleman which would be him or her and tell the the bank the lender or the owner of that company the one that hired the general to, to stop paying him until he pays you uh, you know so that's pretty much it and um Again, this could be for the work you've done that hasn't been paid for or the materials you bought that hasn't been paid for. Um, so that's last dot right here says the stop notice is basically it tells the person with the construction funds or the money or the one that's lending to stop to stop the money from going to the to the again to the general to the prime until you've been paid now. <clears throat> this by doing this this will some companies will once they find out they'll ask for a stop notice themselves because this will pr protect them as well and it'll also protect the sub sometimes um let's say sometimes uh, for, uh companies that sell products such as material suppliers they'll also use stop notices to protect themselves and to get their money okay so stop notices are ser are served to owners lenders agents of the person entity requesting work 
um, if you're doing public work to the department or the agencies <coughs> um, doing the public project, um, when you're going to do a stop notice, you always want to get it certified by mail and you want to get a receipt. Okay. Um, it could be done in person, but it's only recommended if you if you're able to get a signature from the person that you're giving it to, because um, pretty much this is your only proof that you have that you sent it, and this is the only way you're gonna stop uh, pretty much the general or the prime from not paying you. So you need you guys need to be on top of this. All right. Again, like I said, clients can request a stop notice themselves if they notice that the prime hasn't paid their subs or suppliers. Um, so pretty much if the sub and supplier does, they don't produce a stop notice, well, it'll later on in the future, if they ever want to sue for money, they won't be allowed to because they failed to give the stop notice to the person or should I say to the um, to the lender, the homeowner, or the owner, or the project manager, when they requested it. All right. So once once a client or a lender, agency, whatever receives a stop notice, what they should do is stop paying the prime, and that'll pretty much make the prime. It'll force the prime to pay the sub or supplier. Okay. So. Lenders and banks don't have to comply with stop notices, which means <clears throat> they can still keep paying contractors that are primes or generals unless those stop notices are bonded. If, if you want to, these stop notices bonded, it'll be probably be a 1%, maybe 2% on the, um, the money owed. But if you're dealing with a bank or a lender or an agency that is lending money, well, this is going to be the only way to protect yourself, so you want to get them bonded. Um, typically, this doesn't apply to residential work unless you're getting it something financed, but that's a different story. By then, you would apply this uh, bond to the stop notice. Okay, so stop notices cause money to stay in a, in a freeze until the matter is settled, so... Pretty much this can be a fast process or a long process. For example, if you don't get paid, this could be almost a two year waiting, a waiting uh, time. Now, if you wait the two years, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get paid. Now, some people don't like going through this whole process because it take, does take that long or it can take that long depending on who you're dealing with. Or it could just be someone that's, you know, on top of their game and doesn't, you know, play with money and then understand that you know that time is money so all they want is the project fixed and they'll pay you like that you know so it all depends uh, who you're dealing with and if they're you know if they do legit business <coughs> I'm kind of sick so if I'm coughing that's kind of why <laughs> all right so pretty much everybody benefits from a stop notice because when you do a stop notice correctly, it pretty much makes it so that the client knows that the prime they're dealing with is not isn't doing real isn't doing legit work and that they should be on top of their game and dealing with another person like that or that company. Um, it lets the clients know that their money is not being used properly and that they should be aware of it. And it lets lenders know that the that the prime that they're dealing with you know, is not, a, again, is not operating legitly. So this will protect pretty much everybody. And in the end, it'll cause a better way of doing business in the future for all parties. Okay, so release bonds. This is once you, once you put in a stop notice, the person, a prime contractor, can, can have a release bond, um, enabled so this is going to pretty much be make it so that they can receive money again from the from the owner lender or bank and um pretty much what's going to happen once you have that it, they're going to charge you about 150 percent on the amount that you or that the prime contractor owes you all right and this is going to be bonded so that 
everybody's guaranteed that you're gonna pay it off and you're pretty much gonna you're pretty much gonna have to sign a bunch of paperwork saying that you will pay the money off that you owe you know um so you know this is also going to protect the sub and suppliers and the clients as well so you know um so most people once they get a release bond it's it could be for multiple reasons maybe they have a certain amount of uh, work they have to get done by a certain date so this is why they use a release bond you know it, it all depends um subs and suppliers who have their stop notice released by the prime are secured obviously but the prime can now receive money again <coughs> so this is pretty much what i just said right now so it just makes it so that money can now go into the prime again and he can he or she can use that for whatever they want and you know you're guaranteed that you're going to get paid now for having it bonded um so bonds owners lenders contractors can get the project bonded at about one to two percent of the contract price um big projects on t are typically bonded especially if they go through a lender or a bank um so it could be maybe a mansion that's being built um it could be a public project a union project um typically these are bonded um it just guarantees two things or should i say two things can be guaranteed if you use a bond so one of them is the performance bond the other one is the payment bond if you use a performance bond you're guaranteed a project uh, is going to be completed based on plans and specs and which means if a contractor doesn't go by those plans or specs they're going to be responsible for all the money that's owed not you um, so this is going to protect the client and pretty much banks if if you get a performance bond so and if they don't go by that well the bonding agency will pretty much hire another company to do do the work all over and it's going to cost the other contractor the money not you or the bank again so if you use a payment bond so payment bonds are guaranteed so that the subs and suppliers and anybody else involved gets paid okay so pretty much this guarantees that you don't owe any money you know as long as you pay your time as long as you pay on time any other extra money that is owed is will not be your maybe won't, won't be your problem it, it'll you know you guys are pretty much an agreement once you get a bond like that and public prop public jobs you know you, you got to get bonded it's, it's an automatic you're gonna have to get a payment bond um so if an owner uses a bond a payment bond they are protected against any extra charges and liabilities from the prime not paying subs or suppliers okay owners are protected completely from stop notices if they record if the bonds are recorded at a county recorder okay so that that's pretty much a guarantee if you do a contract bond this pretty much means that you as long as everybody gets paid on time as long as everybody's following the performance I mean you're you are 100% protected so and even if you aren't protected as long as you pay on time you're pretty much guaranteed that your project will be completed on a certain date and if it isn't completed on a certain date you're not responsible for it the contractor is and no money comes out of you okay so a notice of completion and secession okay so a notice of completion needs to be filed by the owner within 10 days after the work is complete this prevents the contractor from having a larger a, lar a longer time to file a lien this pretty much protects you so that if the job has been completed in ten, um, completed after 10 days pretty much you're no longer required um, I guess but again I mean you're no longer gonna get, you're no longer gonna have to receive uh let's say a contractor uh, wants to I don't know put a lien on your property so you're protected pretty much after that if you put if you use a notice of competition um, typically contractors are gonna talk to you about this when you're doing a contract because this pretty much also helps them too if they're dealing with another sub or something like that that isn't doing legit work um, a notice of secession if work has stopped for more than 30 days the owner is entitled to recording notice of secession which means work has stopped at your property 
Okay, so pretty much guarantees that it lets the whole your county know that work has been finished and pretty much prevents again the contractor from put, from putting a lien on your property. Now the difference is one had you one in one co in one of the notice of competition means the job has been completed. A notice of of cessation, which means date there's only there's been thirty days that no work has been done and you're fine with that uh, with the result of that work. And pretty much a notice of non-responsibility lets the prime and sub know that the client is not responsible for any incident, injury, or payment encompassed by work not ordered must be recorded with the kind of recorder. Okay, so for example, maybe a sub charge you 10 G's because they're gonna, I don't know, um, let's say drywall your whole building, your house. And on the contract, you didn't um, you didn't want the garage boarded up, but they did it anyways, right? So if you put a notice of of non responsibility and they didn't and they didn't um, notice that that you didn't ask for that, well, pretty much you got that work done for free, and they can't come after you once you notice once you put a notice of non responsibility. Okay, so. What, when we're going to go back to talking about mechanics lane, because this pretty much is kind of important. You're going to be asked on this topic a lot when you do a test. So what happens if a mechanics lane needs to be enforced by co the courts? And this is after you uh, you put a mechanics lane on a, on a owner's property. And this is private work again. You can't use mechanics lane on public property. Um... So pretty much a mechanics lane. Okay, so you pretty much once you put a mechanics lane, you have 90 days to start a lawsuit. So you're gonna get all your lawyer information. You're gonna get it with him or her, and you're gonna go after the clients. You're gonna get their parcel number where their lot is. You're gonna get your their address, their telephone number, their names. Um, if they use the banking, uh, if they use the bank or lender, you're gonna get all that info, and. Pretty much, once you start that lawsuit, it takes you 90 days to have it all set up. I mean, obviously, you want to start doing it as soon as possible. It could be up to 90 days. Um, sometimes, if it goes through, and let's say the other person doesn't want to deal with it, now you can postpone this, and it could take up to a year. Now, a lot of times, people go this route because this means that if they haven't paid you in a year, so... What's going to happen is you're going to get paid pretty much on the spot because the court is going to, or the judge that's going to take your case is going to understand that you even gave them a a notice, right? You, you gave them a, you gave them time to build up some money to pay you. And if they haven't paid you within the year, I mean, the judge is pretty much going to go in your favor unless you like, you're also doing some shady work. So pretty much once you have that set up, it could take. You, you can pretty much take it a trial within two years. Um, the best option, again, like I said, is have the notice of credit because this makes it so that you no longer have to keep going back and forth to the to trial, to court, and you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get paid because you gave them the benefit of the doubt. Um, so... If you, if let's say if everything goes right and they pay you, I don't know. Let's say within the 90 days, you're pretty much gonna give them a release of liability, which means, um, well, there's two ways of doing it. One is with a condition, and one is with unconditional. Um, if they paid you everything, you do want to get an unconditional. If they still owe you money after they agree to pay you. You want you're gonna get a you want to get one that has a conditional clause, which means um, pretty much you're still they're still on the hook unless they pay you the rest of the, of the money. So pretty much you're protected. So you guys really want to know the difference between conditional and conditional. Conditional, which means there's there's a clause to it. Unconditional, which means everybody's it's a win-win for everybody. So. You know, you guys got to know this. <laughs> All right, the deadlines. Um, primes. Prime contractors have 90 days to put a mechanics lane. 
and to uh, to start it, I guess. So, it's, uh, if a notice of competition, competition, I, I messed up right there, or secession has not been recorded. So that's you guys are you guys got ninety days for that. If you're a sub or supplier, uh, you got ninety days to record a mechanics lien or stop notice. Uh, I put a I put a mechanics lien because remember subs can be primes. Okay, remember that. If you're a sub though under a prime, you have you you're gonna use a, obviously the twenty day twenty day preliminary day notice, but you're gonna put a stop notice. Okay. If if a notice of competition or secession hasn't been recorded, and a prime has sixty days to record a mechanics lien if a notice of competition or secession has been recorded. Okay, this is where it different uh, differentiates. Sub and prime sub subs and supplier sub and suppliers have thirty days to record a mechanics lien. Or stop notice if the if the notice of competition or se or secession has been recorded. Okay, the difference is the difference. Remember the difference is the 90 days is if is if the notice of competition or secession has not been recorded, and for the prime 60 and the in the the sub 30 days is if it has been recorded by the client. Or the lender bank, 